This video will walk you through the annual exempt property report for property used for schools or charitable purposes. For additional information, you may want to review the instructions page included with this report. You should complete a different report for property that is exempt because it is used for religious purposes or for property that is used for fraternal or veterans organizations. There are separate training videos for each of those reports. You have received this report because the records of the Division of Property Taxation show that the organization you represent is the owner of property that is exempt from property taxes. All owners of exempt property are required to file this report annually. You have two choices of how to file. You may complete the paper report and mail or hand deliver it to the Division of Property Taxation at 1313 Sherman Street, room 419, Denver, Colorado, 80203. Or, you may elect to file this report online by going to the Department of Local Affairs website and clicking on the property taxation link. The complete web address can be found near the top of this report. This video deals with the paper report only, but it should also be helpful for online filing. If you wish to file online, you should note the file number, the report number, and the PIN on the upper right-hand corner of your report. Those numbers will be needed when using the online filing system. Please note, the PIN changes every year. If the property was sold or transferred during the previous year, note that fact and the date of the transfer in Section 3 of this report and return it to the Division of Property Taxation. If this is the case, no fee is required. If the property was sold or transferred during the current year, this report must be completed and filed, along with any necessary filing fee, in order to keep the exemption valid for the part of the year you owned the property. The Division of Property Taxation will mail this report to you no later than March 1st of each year. If you return the completed report by April 15th, there is a $75 filing fee. If the report is returned after April 15th, but no later than July 1st, the filing fee increases to $250. If the report is not returned by July 1st, you have lost your exemption for the current year. This is referred to as a forfeiture of your exemption. After that, you will have to take other actions to reestablish your exemption. You should contact the Division of Property Taxation if you need more information on these processes. Now to the report itself. If you are completing the paper report, you can always attach any additional information that you think is relevant. Unfortunately, this feature is not available to online filers. Section 1 contains the name and address of your organization. Any corrections can be noted here. If the name of the organization has changed, please submit supporting documentation. An example of this could be the amendment to your Articles of Incorporation filed with the Colorado Secretary of State's office. If your organization acquired the property from the owner listed in this Section 1, you should not file this report. An exemption does not automatically transfer from one owner to another. The new owner must file a new application for exemption. The application form can be found at the Division of Property Taxation's website, which is the same site where you found this video. Section 2 simply provides additional miscellaneous information, including how to access this video. It requires no information from you. Section 3 shows the legal description and usually the street address of the property. If either has changed, indicate that on the report. If you are providing a new legal description, it must not include any additional property. If additional property has been acquired, you can request an exemption for that property by filing a new application. Section 4 shows the market value of your property according to the Division of Property Taxation Records. Please correct this as appropriate. Section 5 requests that you provide the name, the daytime telephone number, and the email address for someone authorized by your organization to answer questions about the property. Review the information in Section 6 and check whether this continues to be the primary use of the property. If you checked yes, then move on to the sections identified as You Must Complete Sections at the bottom of this Section 6. 
Be sure to complete all of those required sections so we do not have to contact you for additional information. If you checked No, attach a detailed explanation describing the current use of the property. Then proceed to Section 14, where you are asked to sign and date the report. Section 7 requires you to identify each building on the property and to provide more detail on the use. List the buildings on your property on the left-hand side and how each building is used on the right-hand side. If there are no building improvements on the property, note that this exemption is for land only, then describe the use. Please be specific about the use. If the exemption is for personal property only, write personal property only on the left-hand side and explain how your personal property is used on the right-hand side. As used here, personal property does not refer to the property that you own personally. Rather, it refers to the statutory definition. Generally, it means movable property, for example, office furniture and equipment. As requested on the report, be more specific than charitable purposes. If this is all you write, we will contact you to provide us with more detail. For example, a description that the property is being used for the administrative offices for your organization would be adequate. For sections 8 through 12, you are asked to complete the one identified as a must-complete section at the bottom of section 6. If section 6 indicates no other sections need to be completed, you can skip sections 8 through 12 and move directly to section 13. Section 8 is to be completed for properties that are used for school purposes. Section 8A requires you to identify the description that best applies to your school. Elementary, secondary, post-secondary, or other. Section 8B asks you to briefly describe the school's curriculum. In Section 8C, note if daily attendance is required. If it is not, attach a copy or an explanation of the school's attendance policy. Note in Section 8D whether this school also includes a child care center, preschool, pre-kindergarten, after-school care, or daycare. If you answered no to 8D, then you do not need to complete Section 8E. If you answered yes to 8D, proceed to answer the two questions in Section 8E. The first question in Section 8E is whether the program is licensed by the Colorado Department of Human Services, and the second question is whether the program is an integral part of your school. If you answered no, to either question in 8E, then you must also complete Section 11, Charitable Child Care Center. If the property is used only as a child care center, it may still be appropriate to complete this Section 8 because the property may still qualify as a school if it meets the statutory definition. That statute requires operation by a nonprofit institution, a curriculum that includes an educational program that is not more than six hours per day, teachers that are trained in preschool through eighth grade instruction, and that the school is licensed. If your property is only a child care center and does not meet this definition, then you should proceed to section 11 to be completed for a charitable child care center. Section 9 is to be completed for properties that are used for charitable, non-residential purposes. In Section 9A, describe the charitable purpose that this property is used for. Also, identify the activities that relate to this use. If your organization has a mission statement, this would be the appropriate place for it. You may attach additional information as needed to adequately describe the purpose of your organization and the use of this property. Section 9B asks you to identify those who benefit from the charitable activities described in 9A. Section 9C asks about the property that is being held to be rehabilitated for low-income residential use. 
This property could consist of vacant land or vacant residential property that is in need of rehabilitation before it could be inhabited. Section 10 is to be completed for properties that are used as charitable, licensed healthcare facilities. However, if the property is a federally qualified health center, you should complete Section 9 and not this Section 10. We recognize that you may own multiple properties that are exempted from property taxes in this category. A separate report is required for each property. You should answer the questions in this Section 10 as they relate to the property identified at the beginning of this report only. Section 10A asks you to identify the category of license for this property from the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment. You should be specific. Do not leave this blank or write licensed healthcare facility. A few examples of correct answers are hospital, general, home care agency, or community mental health center. There are several other designations. If you are unsure, please visit the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment website. Section 10B asks if any part of the property is excluded from that license. An example of this would be space in a building used for a private doctor's office. If you answer yes to this question, you should provide additional information such as who is using this non-licensed space, how large is the space, and what is the space being used for? Section 10C asks you to report unrelated trade or business gross annual income for the previous year. In general, this refers to income that you make at this property that is not related to the healthcare license you hold. If you reported unrelated trade or business income, Section 10D asks you to report the total gross annual income from all sources for the property during the previous year. Section 11 is to be completed for properties that are used for a charitable child care center. Section 11A asks you to identify the type of license you have for this child care center from the Colorado Department of Human Services. Examples of license types are child care center, day treatment center, or school age child care center. Visit the Colorado Department of Human Services website if you are unsure of your license type. We recommend that you use the previous year's financial statement to complete sections 11B, C, and D. In section 11B, you are to report the gross annual income you received from this property during the previous year. Total annual tuition received during the previous year should be reported in Section 11C. Total waived or reduced fees for the financially needy for a full prior year should be reported in Section 11D. Section 11E rounds out the reduced fee information by asking you to attach a copy of your sliding fee scale if you use one. Section 12 is to be completed for properties that are used for charitable residential purposes. By Division of Property Taxation Rules, residential property is defined as having an average length of stay of more than 90 days. Please be aware that the Division of Property Taxation may have sent you an additional required document described as an occupancy report. The occupancy report is separate from this report. For questions about that document, please contact our office. Section 12 lists eight potential residential uses for your property. You are asked to select which of those eight best describes the occupancy of your property. Section 13 is where you are to identify whether the property was used by someone other than the owner during the prior year. If you answered yes to this question, you need to provide more detail. This additional detail must include the name of the user, the number of uses during the year, the average hours per use, the area used in square feet, and the total amount of compensation received for the use. 
This information should be provided for each individual or organization. If you need to attach extra pages in order to list all users, please do so. Failure to provide user information may result in back taxes plus interest. You are also asked to report the total size of the building or buildings covered by this exemption. The size should be reported in square feet. Section 14 asks you to sign and date your report. Note that you are asked to sign under penalty of perjury. Make your check payable to the Colorado Department of Local Affairs. Write your file number and report number on the check. These numbers are located in the upper right-hand corner of your report. You may pay for multiple reports with a single check. Mail your reports to Division of Property Taxation, 1313 Sherman Street, Room 419, Denver, Colorado, 80203. Detailed information on payment and mailing can be found in the red lettering at the bottom of page 2 of the report. Thank you for watching this video. We hope it has been helpful. For more information, visit the Division's website at www.colorado.gov forward slash pacific forward slash dola forward slash property dash taxation. Among other things you can find on our website are instructions for filing annual reports and the exemptions application form. You are also welcome to call the exemptions section at the Division of Property Taxation during normal business hours at 303-864-7780.